All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Vaishnavi. I am a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I work with the OpenShift AI team. Uh, here is my colleague, Priyanka. She works with IBM as a research scientist. We are really excited to be here. This is our first time at KubeCon. So yeah, let's get started with the session. Um, welcome to our session, Observe Smartly to Manage Less the OVM Story. Uh, this title actually encapsulates what we want to propose, a new, a shift in approach towards observability. So observe smartly because we don't need to observe everything, we just need to observe right things, right? Manage less because your teams need to focus on innovation, not on managing observability data. The OVM story is our, uh, our journey towards intelligent observability. But before diving into the fun stuff, let me go over what are the challenges with the uh, traditional observability approaches, right? I know we have spoken a lo lot about it in today's sessions, about the uh, challenges in observability, but we do have a fresh take on it and uh, have a proposed solution at the end of it. So please bear with us till then. So as mentioned in uh, today's uh, multiple sessions, we have multiple challenges in the observability. We have alert fatigue. Uh, so there are thousands of alerts coming in daily, but only 10 of them are uh, actionable. This results in team being uh, desensitized towards the alerts. There are critical alerts getting missed. Uh, there is also a risk of engineering burnout. Next up, we have metric overload. There are systems uh, today like every component, every service, every container is generating metrics today. We have uh, infrastructure metrics, we have application metrics, we have business metrics, and all seem to be very valuable, right? But it's really overwhelming. And when we move uh, compute to edge, it has its own challenges. Edge comes with constraints. We have bandwidth limitations, often restricted uh, to local infrastructure. We have a bandwidth that is highly location dependent. We have latency challenges, uh, especially for applications that need real-time processing. There are storage constraints. Edge devices often have limited uh, storage. Also, the cost for local storage is very significant. And that's what I want to dive next. This is not just a technical problem, it is also a financial one. You can say we all are paying the observability tax, right? We can just uh, uh, look at the costs here. So there are direct costs. We have storage costs, egress fees, processing costs, and these are highly dependent on scale factors. So as we um, increase the number of services, increase number of environments, increase the uh, request volume, these uh, directly uh, uh, affect your uh, costs there. There are also hidden costs. We have compute network costs for processing. We have engineering time, querying, optimization efforts. We have operational overhead, uh, training cost, and the list goes on and on. If we translate this into an example, this is a simple microservice, uh, a single application deployed in a four node uh, Kubernetes cluster. Pretty standard monitoring stack here. We have Prometheus, Jaeger, and FluentD, and we are running constant load over 24 hours. And if we look at the volume and cost breakdown here for 30 days of, of data and just add up metrics and uh, metrics traces and logs, it adds up to 450 GB per month. Uh, and also, the, if we look into the cost, just adding up egress and storage costs, it comes around $50 per month. But uh, this seems less, but uh, just want to emphasize here, this is just one single application over a period of one month. So if you add the scale factors here with number of environments, services, and the uh, increase in volume requests, uh, it will go into thousands of dollars. Uh, we do have links to some real world uh, use cases here that generate uh, billions of metrics per day. And now you can imagine the uh, exponential growth in cost in those. Let's look at some uh, survey results here. The theme is common. The cost of observability outweighs the benefits that come from observability. The last metric here is pretty telling. 98% of respondents state that uh, they limit observability data to save the cost. And you might say, okay, that is one of the uh, 
thing that we can do, we can just collect less metrics or sample everything, right? And uh, that will uh, help us with the cost. So there are some dangers to naively reduce the volume. Uh, we saw uh, additional time spent in preparing that data. There is a uh, uh, risk of uh, dependent processing processes breaking. There is a risk of losing valuable insights and analytics. Uh, there was also a risk of not detecting issues in production or out, uh, during outage, right? So the message is clear here. We don't need to observe less. We need to observe smartly. And that's why we developed OVM. It will help teams to uh, intelligently manage and reduce their uh, observability volume without sacrificing into valuable insights and analytics. So I'll now pass on to uh, Priyanka. She will go through OVM and what it, how it helps. So thanks, Vaishnavi, for the nice introduction on the problem that we've been hearing since morning on observability volume. So your observability volume manager or OVM says, how can I help, right? So it can help you observe smartly to manage so that you can manage less with keeping in mind that you don't have any impact on the observability tasks that are there in the downstream, like your dashboards or your analytic tasks. Right, so what does OVM bring in? It brings in automation. That is, it supports dynamic transformations on your metric modality, that is metric data. And by transformations, I mean it can be filtering of your metrics or reducing the frequency, increasing your frequency of your metrics, as well as some user-defined transformations as well. It is, it is kind of a plug and play where you can define your transformations of what you want to do at, on your uh, metrics as well. But all this can happen without the user intervention. That is, once the user defines these transformations and some conditions for these transformations to be applied, it all happens automatically when these conditions are triggered. This is something that we'll see as part of the demo today. The second is specificity, specificity. That is, you have a control on the, uh, that you have a tunable norm of what granularity you want the transformations to happen. That is, it can be a metric or a metric with a certain label, or as it can be something with a lower, uh, lower granularity of, like, say, you want to tune the, uh, tune the metric uh, volume for a edge or a, a single cloud location as well. So that tuning knob is something that OVM provides you. The third, as we say, observe smartly, is something that we bring in through intelligent pruning. That is, we analyze these collected metrics and recommend transformations that can be applied on these metrics. Because as Vaishnavi said, there are billions to trillions of metrics being collected every day. You don't know what kind of transformations need to be applied or what kind of patterns these metrics have. There can be some similarities across, pattern, uh, across these metrics. Some metrics can be derived from other, some other metrics. And these are some patterns that are intelligent pruning can provide or recommend. And obviously, once you like it, you can just automate and let it part be of the uh, part of the automation cycle as well. Last is adaptive monitoring that is based on what uh, risk level your current edge is at. It can let you zoom in or zoom out for certain met uh, certain metrics or certain node or certain edge as well, right? So that risk level based tuning is also something that uh, OVM brings in. Uh, before diving into the demo and how it fits in into current architectures, let's go into what brings about OVM uh, overall, right? What is the architecture? What are the components in it? So the first uh, component that we we'll talk about is the processor, where uh, it actually the diverse pr transformations are actually performed. So processor sits along with your me metric collectors like Prometheus and Open Telemetry on each of your edge locations or the cloud locations, and uh, any, and it uh, sits on the path of the data path of the observability pipeline uh, through between the metric collector to your central aggregator, right? And what kind of transformations is it can perform is something like filter, uh, frequency, aggregate, or, or your, your user-defined transformations. But what to perform when is something that's uh, triggered or is given as an input to the processor via our manager, which is our um, a central component, which also exposes crude APIs to any user where, where he or she can define, okay, this kind of rule uh, triggers this kind of transformation for so-and-so cloud or so-and-so set of clouds. So once a condition is triggered, automatically manager pushes that transformation on the particular processor running on that edge location. But as we already mentioned, there are 
there is there are a huge set of metrics and the user cannot uh, refine transformations for each of these metrics. That's where we put in our controller, which is kind of the brain of OVM, which will analyze the metrics collected by our central aggregator and recommend uh, volume reduction transformations for your metric data. Uh, so before going into the demo, just to, to highlight that where we can fit in, right? So uh, most of the tools that are used in the market today have uh, do support Prometheus and open, uh, open telemetry kind of metric format, and they have an agent running on each of their uh, locations, and they have a control plane running centrally where it'll have UI, it'll have dashboards running, it'll have analytical functions running. Right? And uh, our processor can sit along with the agents that these uh, tools have, and our controller can be part of their uh, data part, uh, part of their control part, uh, control plane as well. Right? So it can easily uh, be available or work with these stacks because they support op Prometheus and Open Telemetry file form uh, data formats as well. So let's see OVM in action now. So as part of the demo, we have a setup where we'll have two edge locations, the east edge and the west edge, where there are app and cluster metrics being generated and being collected by Prometheus. We have the same demo with OTEL as a metric collector and it's available on our GitHub repo. So our processor sits along with uh, the metric collector and the transformations as a first part of the demo will be defined by the user and we'll see how the uh, specification of the uh, transformations need to be there. And as a second part of the demo, we'll show without the user intervention how controller can provide these transformations. Right? So we see everything is flowing well, the metrics are flowing in well to the metric aggregator. Next, we just see what kind of transformations can be applied. So for the east edge, we will try to induce a network condition or a network bandwidth restriction. So in, in that case, what will happen is uh, we, this is expression will will identify that there is some network condition happening. And based on that, we'll fire an action, that is the firing action for us will be to add a filter transform so that just allow, so that it will allow just the app network metric to flow in for a particular IP or a particular port or a particular application which is identified by a label that is IP 192.168.1.3 and the action will be just included and if, if you have wanted something else you could have put in, in exclude instead of uh, include or in fact use a draft, drop transform as well. Right? The second transformation that we talk here is on the west edge where we say that there is some issue happening on a particular node of that cluster and you want to drill in or zoom in more into the network metrics or, or zoom in more into the metrics of that particular node. So you want to increase the frequency of that particular node from the default 30 seconds to 500, uh, 5000, that is 5 seconds. That is instead of the 30 seconds, uh, scraping the metrics every 30 seconds, it will be scraped every 5 seconds. So that's what is the second transformation that we have defined here for the West Edge. Now, as in the interest of time, we will just show the first uh, transformation being triggered where we induce a network condition on the first edge, that is the East Edge. And in the East Edge, we see the network uh, condition happened, the uh, uh, rules started firing in. And based on that, automatically the transformation got added. Right? To see what transformation got added, let's go into the manager UI. And on the east edge, we see the transformation being added. And you can see that, okay, the filter transform added for the 192.168.103 IP metrics to be only included and rest all to be dropped. Right? So to actually confirm the transformation got applied correctly, we go back to the aggregator dashboard and we actually see only that IP uh, 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 IP metrics to be flowing in or that applications metrics to be flowing in and all the other metrics are being dropped uh, as you can see. So, but as you saw till here that it was a user who had defined these transformations and that's not feasible with the billion and trillion amount of traffic that we are, uh, traffic, metric traffic that we are seeing every day in the cloud infrastructures. We trigger now as second part with the demo, the controller or the brain of our uh, OVM, which will recommend what kind of similarities it uh, sees across these metrics being collected. So for that, we trigger the controller through the Analyze API of OVM. And based on that, it actually generated some insights. So let's go into the, OV, uh, the controller dashboard 
And as you can see, it has seen that there were met network metrics being collected by our app, that is NWDAF in this case. It was collecting the network metrics, and similarly, there were network metrics collected by, for that particular pod by Kubernetes as well, right? And it actually saw that these are actually similar, and it gave, gave up a recommendation that these three metrics are quite similar to the pod network bytes metrics being collected by Kubernetes, and you can actually drop a few of them, right? Uh, so be, uh, you can actually stop at that and you can apply the rule yourself or as part of the demo here We've triggered automated uh, Transformations being applied by the controller itself and let's see what uh, it applied on The manager UI so we go back to the manager UI go in to the east edge and see what got applied and you can see that automatically uh, the controller applied the transformation to drop uh, the NWDAF network utilization metrics because they were similar to the Kubernetes network metrics being uh, generated. And now that the transformations got applied, we'll again go back to the uh, uh, aggregator UI and see that the transformations got correctly applied. You could see only the network uh, might metrics for Kubernetes flowing in and rest all have stopped flowing in. Right? So the drop had happened automatically. So as part of this demo, we saw that automatic transformations got applied. You could drill down, uh, drill down to the granularity of a metric, and you can specify at the level of what label pair you want to apply, trans apply the transformation for. You could, uh, we could actually provide you intelligent pruning because all these things could be done automatically by our controller. And we could adopt based on your network conditions as we could zoom in and out the frequency of the metrics as well. Right, so that's what we have for OVM right now. Uh, we are planning to uh, before going in on our next steps. We w the first uh, the next question that comes into everyone's mi uh, mind is how beneficial is OVM to your uh, observability stack? Right, for that we did an experiment where we said, okay, you have your full bandwidth available to send your observability data at any frequency that you want. So you obviously send it at a maximum frequency of, like all metrics are being collected every one second, you send that uh, at the highest frequency possible. And that helps your analytic tasks that are running because they are getting more data, they can do analyze better. So it's good performance for your anomaly detection functions that run centrally for, based on these metric data. Right. Uh, please know that we ran it with uh, uh, with almost 50 anomaly functions being used at the uh, central location. Right. But this is not an ideal condition, or this is not a condition uh, in which our edge clouds uh, are deployed nowadays. They have a very limited bandwidth available, especially for tasks like observability. Right. In that case, what we uh, what ends up happening, the metrics are sent at a very high frequency of say 100 seconds, and that impacts your uh, anomaly functions a lot. Right. So what Prometheus did it, it actually is kind of a between thing between uh, the max and the min bandwidth utilization. It sends frequency at a default, uh, sends metrics at a default frequency of every 30 seconds, right? But obviously because this is not the maximum frequency at which the metrics were being generated, it impacts the anomaly functions performance as well. How the OVM helps in is it sits after Prometheus and adopts the metric frequencies based on their importance on what they apply to the anomaly function. So there can be some metrics which are used for multiple anomaly functions. There can be some uh, metrics which are, which, are imp which are being used for anomaly functions that are more critical compared to other anomaly functions. Keeping all that in mind, it applies different frequencies for each of these metrics. And with that application, with the same uh, amount of bandwidth that's used by Prometheus when it's scraping for every 30 seconds, it actually reduces the uh, impact on the anomaly function by almost 600x. That is, it reduces the impact on performance of the anomaly function because of its fine tuning of the frequencies of the metric. So definitely OVM helps when it sits on your observability pipeline to reduce impact on your downstream stars as well. So what's next with OVM? Uh, we spoke about metrics at length today, but we are trying to extend it to log and metric mo uh, traces modality in the coming, uh, coming releases. As well as uh, we spoke about that we have a central aggregator where the metrics are being collected. We want to change it so that you can route the data not to just a central aggregator, but you can have multiple destinations for your uh, metrics to be collected because you want to may be maybe run some local analytics task on your local cloud as well. So that kind of support we are trying to add in. 
And now that we actually saw in our, in our demo that we sit on the observability pipeline, you can do much more transformations done just on the volume production. But we can, in fact, enrich the data or enrich the metrics based on metadata that are present on, say, your edge or cloud locations. And in fact, support uh, encryption or PII masking because we are sitting before it hits your metrics hit the WAN network. And as everyone says, we have to get intelligent. So we're trying to make OPM more intelligent by uh, enhancing the code base for our controller to not just do correlated metrics or similar metrics, identify, but identify derived metrics as well or derived computed metrics so that you can reduce the volume even further. Right, so uh, at that we'll stop the talk today, but we'll encourage all of you to do check out our repo. We have a sticker for all of you with a QR for our repo as well. Do check out do the repo, the POC that we ran is it can easily run on your laptop as well. So you can try that out and uh, read up on our blogs and a paper which talks about the transformations at length. And do reach out to us and contribute to OVM. Thank you. Hey. Uh, thanks for the talk. It, it, it really seems like it can save a lot of money. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, just one thing that I, 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 I think I didn't get it exactly. So it's like uh, another agent that sits between, uh, let's say, the Opetalum collector and the observability platform. Is that right? Yeah. So, and we have uh, like an exporter uh, in, the, in the collector, probably an uh, OTLP exporter that sends to this agent, and this agent sends to the backend. Right, yes. So we had a common agent because I understand your question that OTL also provides the transformations on its own, but we wanted to be a generic. Uh, component or kind of a generic processor which can where you can define your transformations as well which are not readily available like in hotel or in fact in prometheus you cannot provide dynamic transformations or at the granularity of every metric right you can say okay for include these metrics for a certain cloud but you cannot go at a granularity and you can you cannot dynamically change that configuration so we wanted to sit in and be agnostic of what the collector is that way yes yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and second and last question, yeah. uh, you mentioned that the, the, the brain, the controller, mm -hmm. gets the, 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 the metrics, uh, analyze, and then generates another configuration. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of data search can be plugged into, into the controller? Uh, data sets in the sense the metric data collected yeah. from Thanos is something that we are pushing in. We are actually working uh, with Instana to see its data and analyze it as well. It can be different. Any uh, For now, it's actually for metric modality, whichever, if it supports uh, Prometheus and OTEL format, uh, it's supported by our controller. And it can be extended, now we are extending it for uh, log data being collected by Loki as well. Awesome, thank you.